Coach Rod, welcome to the W2 Prison Break Show, man. I'm I'm so psyched to have you on today. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me, sir. You got it. You got it. And folks, I want to just stress to you the importance and the power of social media. Coach Rod and I met on TikTok. He came to one of my lives and we connected and we we DM'd each other and now he's on the show. And it's super important, the topic we're going to talk about today, which is health and fitness. But before we get into that, and coach rod's uh business tell us tell the audience how how you got here what were you doing before you you have your business to get to in a bit but just give us kind of the you know couple three minute version of of what you were doing before you got here okay yeah absolutely uh well thanks for having me on of course so so a little bit about rod squad training is our business that we have um and i was active duty military for nine years about four and a half years ago um i sparked off an online personal training business of course during that time frame was right before covid um i was in person training for a couple of years uh and then i decided hey covid hit and i was like okay well i need to go online i need to continue this business um the entrepreneurship i was very very new to the entrepreneurship area um but i knew that there was something that that would come above uh, of the COVID right as soon as before or before it hit um, we had some intel things that were going to pop off and so I said okay well um, how can I continue my business without um, and, and instead of just completely closing it down so when COVID hit I decided to go completely online we ended up getting our, our own app uh, and so we were able to help people from the comfort of their homes not only that but we had coaches that were able to work from home as well um, because you know not the gyms were closed down and so we were doing a lot of home workouts but you know a lot of uh, home equipment uh and so we were doing like training videos and so ever since then uh it's been about four and a half years we've been online training and it's just it's been a ride and it's been super fun Excellent. Excellent. So you mentioned obviously a pivotal event in most people's lives, which is, which was COVID. And, you know, a lot of people chose to freeze, right. And not, and not pivot. That's the word that I wrote down when you started talking about COVID is you, you had a pivot in your business. You went to online. How, how challenging, was there any challenges around that or difficulty or nervousness or fear? Like go back to that moment and just talk about how you got through that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, at, at first, you know, about nine, 10 years ago, I fell in love with fitness as a whole, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and before I started training, uh, I, I was doing my own thing, right? I was deciding like, hey, I'm going to get in really deep into the, the, the health, fitness lifestyle, and then going into um, actually starting my own business and helping other people. Uh, I had a lot of people message me first, right? They're like, hey, your, your progression is so high. You're, you're, you're reaching different levels. Uh, and we see that. And so can you help us out? So I decided, hey, I'm, I'm doing, I started doing in-person training um, completely for free, right? I was doing it completely. Hey, just come work out with me. I'll teach you everything you need to know, you know, working on PDFs, uh, Excel sheets, Word documents, um, and then doing check-ins with them completely for free for about two years. Um, but when, as we we're pivoting um, into actually like starting the LLC, doing, you know, the, uh, the full business aspect before of it, before it, it, it decided like, hey, like during that time frame, I knew that I wasn't familiar with the online world. I had no idea what was going on. I didn't even have a laptop at this point, right? I had a tablet. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I, you know, and, and I'm like, man, I, I need to do something more. I need to invest into myself a little bit. So I ended up getting a mentor in 2019. And the mentor that I had, he had his professional online personal training business. And as I hired him, I hired him for 12 months. And then from there, he I followed every training video that he had. Uh, you know, we did weekly calls, monthly calls to try and see and, and see if maybe it maybe was it something that I that I wanted to do? Or was it something that um, that that would just be too much of a, of a struggle for me, you know, because I was just so used to do like, hey, I can sit here in person with you and train you and help you. But when moving online, I, it was it was I was very scared. I was I didn't know what to do. Right. So I was like, OK, well, I'm going to invest into a laptop. I'm going to invest into uh, different applications, invest into a mentor. And he taught me everything I needed to. Within the first year, we were pretty much successful at the start. So awesome. Yeah. OK. Great share. I'm gonna, a couple of key points that I just want to drive home a little bit further for 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 the listeners is number one, folks. If you heard him say he gave away his training for free, like that's how he started his business. Like that's how he built up his clientele. He's most people aren't willing to do that. They're not willing to, and and it's I think it's overlooked, right? Hey, try me out. 
And ultimately, they'll, I bet you a lot of those people became your clients, if not a handful of them, yes? Yep, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're passionate about health and fitness, and that ultimately becomes your business, okay? Which is what this show is all about, right? You loved, you're, you're passionate about health and fitness, and you decided to start a business based around something that you love. Is there, are there any other reasons why you're, you've chosen to start this business other than your passion? Because it sounds like you have a lot of drive. Sounds like there might be something behind all this, Coach Rod. Absolutely. So, and you know, everybody that anybody who knows, you know, somebody in the military or was in the military themselves know that there's a lot of uh, a little mental aspect that comes from it, right? There's not a whole, sometimes there's a lot of hurry up and wait. There seems like there's a lot that you have to do that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So a lot of people's mental capacity just was not there, right? They didn't have the drive. Um, and a lot of people think that are not in the military, they think, oh, military, they must be fit. And that's just not the case. A lot of us are super tired. We're our, our energy is low. Um, we have a lot of mental health problems. And so in 2015, I went and did a combat tour in Afghanistan. I came back and that's when I started my, my full fitness journey myself was during that time frame. And a lot of my friends during that time frame, you know, we didn't have a lot of time, you know, it was a lot of, Hey, go do your, you know, 12 to 14 hour shift. And then then you get to do what you want. Right. And then, but we didn't have the ability to leave the compound. So we would just work out, work out, work out. And I hadn't known a whole lot of, of what we had or what to do prior to that. I was an athlete, but I didn't know actually how to generate a workout myself. I always had, you know, uh, sports teams or any of that. So as I was transitioning out of like going back into the, uh, the United States, like moving from um, one country to the next, um, I started doing a lot of things for myself. And I started to say, hey, um, I need to fix my mental capacity. And so when other people started seeing what I was doing, they kept asking me, they're like, hey, what are you doing? How are you doing this? And I'm like, well, I just kind of just, I started studying, you know, I started studying the body. I started studying myself. Um, what can I do for myself to transition myself to what I look like and move it to a different area? Because if I wake up in the morning and I like the way I look, automatically my day's better. But if I wake up and I, and I don't have, and I look in the mirror and I'm like, wow, this is not who I want to be or the, the actions and everything that I'm doing throughout my day is not who I want to be. Uh, how, you know, if I go work out first thing in the morning, my day's already started up, up here, right? Um, my head's already clean. It's, a, it's at a clean slate. Um, I'm not sure, you know, especially, you know, Ryan, when you work out after any your workout, you're like, wow, my, 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 um, my mind is just running, you know, the mindset is clear, you want to do so much. And so um, I started helping as many people as I could, when they asked me, they're like, hey, how can I do different things? Or what can I do to transition myself and my mindset to kind of where you're at? And so from then on, I, I started helping one person to the next, to the next, to the next. And eventually I had 15, 20 people that I was helping completely for free. Um, just to help them out, you know, and I was I was in a position, a leadership position uh, in the military. So automatically people already looked up to me. They said, wow, well, he's, you know, he's at a different rank. He may not be like a supervisor rank, but we understand that he knows what he's talking about. So at that point, I was helping so many people and they and, and when somebody would come to me with a testimonial. And that was a big thing for me is that for every once in a while I had an, a testimonial that somebody would post on their social media and be like, hey, Coach Rod helped me lose 20 pounds over the last six months. And that right there just had so, I had so much passion and drive and fire inside of me that I was like, wow, I can do this for a mass amount of people. And, you know, when or somebody else would say, hey, I've been trying to work out for the past year and I've only lost 10 pounds and it doesn't look like I've changed at all, but they work with me for three to four months and they have a completely different mindset. They're, they have to go get new clothes because theirs doesn't fit or, you know, their, you know, overall, you know, at home, their home life is a lot better. Their mental capacity is better. Their, their, their friendships, their family. Um, and then they're actually starting to go about. So I'm like, I'm not just changing your physical appearance. We're changing everything. You're changing your whole lifestyle. So that's where I started helping when I had dozens and dozens of testimonials. I'm like, I got to do something about this, you know? And I feel like I, and that I could change the world one life at a time. And that's my goal. I Along love that. I love that you have a very clear uh, vision and mission. You started with the people that were, you know, in your, in your, in the military, you know, that looked up to you and testimonials are huge. They're huge. When you start getting people to say, Hey, that's mm -hmm. when your business starts to really grow. And I just still, I just go back to like, guys, he was doing it for free. Like he's helping people for out free. for free. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, maybe you had visions of, of the business at that point, but you were just doing your duty. Right. And, and uh, I really, really love that. 
And I also love when you said that in 2019, you were, you were scared, right? You were scared to go online and you had fears and you had doubts. And what did you do? What did you do? You hired somebody, you hired a mentor to help you figure this stuff out, right? You did research where a lot of people were just like, Hey, you can't do that. They're, they let the fear paralyze them. You did not do that. So good on you for, for having the wherewithal to hire somebody to help you. Yeah, that was a whole different area. I didn't, I'd never had a hire a mentor in my whole life, but I knew that if I wanted to get to a, a different level than going on YouTube and just looking up videos that it was, I had to do something different. I had to do How something did you different. find your mentor? Go try. How did I you actually find found that? him off of Instagram. So it was, it was a, a sponsored paid ad. Mm -hmm. uh, he had, he had actually reached out to me himself and he was actually, he had only maybe started the him helping other trainers like two years prior to that. So he had, he hadn't had a whole lot going on either, but the way that he was, his sales call, everything that we went through, I'm like, you know, everything that is that, that I want, you're answering every question that how, how you did it. Right. And so he's like, dude, and I, and I, you know, he built his, his company the way he did it before. And I'm like, well, I, I want to get where you, where you got. And he's like, yeah, well, let's do it. And so I said, okay. And I just took a leap of faith. Of course, I didn't know what he was going to deliver. I didn't know um, what the trainings were going to be like, or how can I transition or, you know, his tactics into my business compared to my avatar who I'm targeting as a clientele, right? Yeah. How can I transition what he did into where my client, so my avatar is actually pinpointed. Now, did you take all of the advice that he gave you? Did you, like, if, let's just say hypothetically, he gave you 10 things to do. Did you do all 10 of them or did you do like <laughs> seven of them? Well, I, I did most of it. So it, it was a lot of training videos. I mean, it was maybe upwards of 30 to 40 hours of training videos. Yeah. And so what, what his aspect was, was watch the video and implement watch the video and implement. And so that's how I generated everything. But I watched all the videos within a month, right? So I watched all the videos and then I went back and watched each video and implemented it. So I kind of, I wanted to see the path before I went down it. And right. so when I have the path then I can find the trails and kind of see, hey, this worked for him, but in my avatar and, and my clientele, I need to be able to go down this path and kind of create my own path and kind of figure out um, not exactly what he did, but in what's going to work for, for the people that I'm training right now. Currently. Right. But you took the mentorship and, and, and just, you know, Absolutely. tweaked it a little bit, but you did for the most part, it sounds like you did everything, you did everything that he told you to do. Absolutely. Which, which is so critical in, in, in coaching and mentoring. I, you know, mm -hmm. it's not, if you, if you want to go find somebody, if you want to do what somebody did, because your coach Rod said, Hey, I want to do what you do. Well, do what they do, not like half of it or 70% of it, do all of it. Super important. Okay. Health and fitness is because you, you alluded to it a little bit earlier. I think it's lacking from a lot of people's lives. It's definitely lacking consistently from a lot of people's lives. Like they'll say they want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a couple of measures in place that help me with workouts. I like to work out in the morning, but Hey man, sometimes I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I, you know, I'd rather not work out, but I also want to be there for my family and be healthy. And, and like you said, when I work out, like I'm already ahead. I'm, I'm already winning the day. I worked out this morning. I got out from the, to the gym. It was dark out still. So I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. So how do you, like, is there a, why are people not working out in your, in your, in your opinion? And I'm just gonna leave it at that. Like, why do you think people are not working out? The ones, especially the ones who say, Hey, I, I want to lose weight or I, I, I want to have a better life and they're just not getting it done. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a really tough question because everybody has a life, right? Everybody wants to have that special, um, that special, uh, excuse because they say, Hey, well, this is a, this is a bigger excuse, right? I have kids, I have a family, I have things that I have needs, I have things that I need to do. Right. Um, but over the years and years and years, uh, let's say you're, you got to a position to where you look in the mirror and you're like, wow, I'm, I'm not where I want to be. But they look back five, 10 years ago and they're like, I used to look like this. And so they always refer back to, oh, I used to do this. Or I used to do that. Or I was this in high school. I was this in college. Um, but they don't realize the time frame, how big it is, right? So they think two or three years, oh, that's not too bad. Five to 10 years, okay, that's a, that's pretty, that's a long time. And so when they when they try to get back into fitness, the, what they do is they're like, wow, it's been four or five weeks and I haven't seen any change, right? So you spent upwards of three to five years or even plus that getting to a point to where you weren't doing anything for your health or your lifestyle. And now you want a quick fix. 
And so they quit on themselves right off the bat. They're like, well, this probably just isn't for me. I'm happy. I have a family, I have kids. I don't need to impress anybody. And that's not necessarily the, um, w- what we want to push to our clients. Like, it's not, it's not, you don't have to, don't do it for other people. Do it for yourself. Do it for your longevity. Do it for your lifespan. Do it for your kids. Because when your kids are in high school and they want you to go watch their game or they want you to go and be a part of their lives, and but you can't because you decided that for 15, 20 years that you just didn't want to do anything for yourself. You have to do something for yourself before you do something for anybody else. That includes your family. That includes everything that you're going through, right? If your kid is, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old and they want to go to the amusement park, but you can't walk more than 30 minutes a day at a time, well, now you can't, now you're taken away from your kid, right? Or you send them off with a friend so that they can don't do their own thing. And now your kid's spending time with somebody else, right? At that point, now it's like, okay, well, now you have lost the motivation. You've lost the discipline. You've lost the consistency. Whereas if take smaller steps, right? Go to the gym two or three times a week. And you don't even have to go to the gym. Maybe do something active, maybe four or five times a week, go for a 30 minute walk, do this, do that. Do it. And the third, there's so many different avenues of approach to it, not necessarily going straight into the gym, zero to a hundred, following a, hundred, uh, a meal plan and maybe working out six, seven times a week. Like you don't have to do that right off the bat. We'll start in increments. We'll start in increments. We'll get you to the points where you actually need to go instead of going from zero to 100 and then you quit on yourself because you think it's too stressful. Right. We're, it's all about adjusting your fitness levels to your daily life schedule. How can we fit this in? Is it going to take 30 minutes away from your screen time that you have on your phone? Or is it going to take 30 minutes away from your kids? What is it going to take away from? Mm-hmm. Right. And most of the time, it's, it's your it's your mindset. It's an aspect of what's most important to you down the line. Right. Because in six months, you can you, you can do a lot in six months. We can change a whole lifestyle in six months. And I believe that's a huge thing is a lot of people just they haven't I have a, such a huge excuse in their head. And, and that, that excuse, they, they they let that excuse cover everything in their whole lives. And it may be just one or two excuses that it's just oh, it's just not for me. Right. But they in the back of their head, they're always thinking, wow, I used to do this. And so they're proud of what they used to do. They're not proud of what's to come. Yeah. And so at that point, it kind of it kind of brings them back and slows them down. Yeah, I love it. I love the energy that you speak with on this. And I mean, hey, look, you know, New Year's resolutions is, is no, uh, uh, there's no mystery that people quit within the first, by the end of January. You just said four weeks yeah. they quit, right? Because they're not used to it. So um, I love that chair. And so you're working with a client. I kind of want to walk through your, because you're doing a lot, of, you're doing the majority of this online. Uh, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, please. So other than you, so you get them over that hump of the four weeks, right? What you basically just described was like, Hey, you got to have a strong why as to why you want to do this, your family, your yeah. kids, you know, you want to be there for them, Wh- whatever it is for somebody, you got to have a reason not to quit. Again, the reason that I don't quit is because I have multiple layers of accountability and I have a reason as to why I want to be healthy and live a long life. Mm-hmm. And other than me just wanting to be around, but what is kind of next level stuff to keep them? You meant, you mentioned like the incremental, the small incremental stuff, but what are some other things that that you're helping them with to stay consistent with it? Because that's what I see people fail at is just sticking with it for, you know, making it a lifestyle change and not like a quote unquote, like a fad diet or whatever. Absolutely. So I'm going to use one of my clients that I was just thinking of recently. Um, and so what happened with her is, you know, she had two kids, um, and she comes to me and she's like, I, I, you know, I, I haven't, you know, my little one's now one years old and I haven't really changed at all, um, from before her, you know, before the last kid that she had. And I'm like, okay, well, what, what have you been doing so far? And she said, well, I've been doing the small things here and there. Okay. So I said, okay, well, let's, let's create small goals. Right. And so what we did is say, Hey, in four weeks, you know, we do check-ins. So with all of us, we do weekly check-ins, right? So we make sure that they upload uh, pictures, they upload measurements, they upload like their body weight. Um, and then we have several questions that we ask them to say, Hey, how's the energy level? How's the digestion? How are you feeling? How are the workouts doing? Um, how is, you know, how is the hydration? So we ask several questions to ensure that whatever the program that we have them on is actually working. And so if it's not working, then we can go ahead and change it up a little bit. But we we do small increments, right? Say, hey, in the next four weeks, if you do what we, we're planning to do and you do it to a T, um, and we're going to start to see movement. We're going to start to see movement. So maybe you won't see as, as much change in four weeks, but our check-ins, you know, we're going to look eight to 12 weeks down the line. And then at at 12 weeks, they're usually like, I feel like this is just repetitive. I feel like this is what's, you know, I don't really feel like a whole lot of change. And I say, okay, well, let's let's reach back to week one, right? Let's go back to week one and say, 
what what did you look like before? And I put the pictures right next to each other. And I said, well, who's this person and who's this person? What were you wearing this time? And let's look at the measurements of this time. And then they start to see like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize. I'm like, yeah, that's why we do check-ins. That's why we have to we have to document everything that we are doing so that when we're when we have that little loss of motivation, we have that self doubt. Our self esteem is a little bit low, right? And and we have to reach back to say, hey, we were here, and now we're here. What can we see in the next twelve weeks, right? What can we do now that we have a good now? You know, the first two to three weeks is me learning you, you learning me as a client, right? I'm the coach, you're the client, and we have to learn each other. We have to learn motives. We have to learn what's going on. You know, you have to figure out the workouts as I'm helping you understand them, understanding the importance of nutrition and hydration and digestion. Um, but now that we're over that, that, that hump of eight to 12 weeks, what is the next eight to 12 weeks going to look like? And then at that point, when we're six months into a program, then we look back at oh, where were you at eight to 12 weeks ago? Not only that, but what were you at on week one, right? And so I've had clients that I've held for over two years now that are just consistent with me. And some of them have dropped over 100 pounds. Some of them have maybe dropped 30 pounds, but they look like a completely different person over a year. Over a year, they can't even recognize who they were before. They're like, all the clothes that I used to have, I don't I have a whole new closet now uh, that I would I, and or they had clothes that fit them five years ago and they just had it in a box. I'm like, how am I fitting into this clothes that I fit five years ago into? I would have never thought that I would get into that. Right. And and, and or they go into the store and they put on a pair of jeans. They're like, I, these are too loose for me or I need to go lower in size or I need to go up in size for some of my male clients who are like man, I gained 20 pounds this year. I didn't even realize it, right? And at that point, it's like, okay, well, now we have small wins. Now we have the discipline. Now we have the commitment. And now it's saying, hey, sometimes you're not going to be motivated. Right? Sometimes you're not going to be motivated. You're going to get up and motivation comes and goes. You're not going to be motivated every single day. I know for sure. I mean, I've been lifting for almost a decade and I, and I'm not always motivated. Some days I don't want to go to the gym. Some days I don't want to drink a gallon of water. Some days I don't want to eat the specific meals that I know I need to eat or, or you know, prioritize my protein protein, or maybe I just want to go have a drink or maybe go eat whatever I want to. And you are more than welcome to do that in moderation. But I'm not always motivated. Sometimes it just comes down to discipline, commitment, consistency. And at that point, once you get over that little hump and just, and remember to yourself, I came this far and I'm not just going to come this far. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to push myself to the next level. And then as part of, you know, with Rod Squad Training and all our coaches, we we implement that and we're mentors to our clients to say, hey, we're we're here with you. You're not by yourself. I'm your personal Google. You have a question, you are more than welcome to reach out to me any time of the day, 24-7. That's the that's the awesomeness of being online. Is like you can, you can ask me a question at two o'clock in the morning. As soon as I wake up at six to go do my cardio, I'm gonna answer you. You know, maybe you're sitting there, you know, laying in bed and you're like, wow, I, I just how am I gonna lose this next five pounds before my wedding in two months? You know, or, or something like that. And sure. you're like, hey, well, let's get on a, let's get on a quick call and I can explain to you how we're gonna do it. And then oh, boom. Well. And, you know, it's, it's the ease of mind. So, yeah. I love that you guys are accessible. You've said this a couple of times. Well, I wrote down tracking and small wins. This is super important is to track your progress and then just, you know, stack a series of small wins together and eventually you get the results. I mean, anyone who's been in athletics, that's how they do it. They focus on the day, like the practice, right? This thing I got to mm -hmm. do, not, hey, the hundred pounds or whatever it is. Like that's, that'll come if you do all the little stuff. Mm -hmm. you've mentioned new, uh, hydration like six times I've heard it. So I got to ask you about it. Nutrition, I think overlooked. I think most people focus on working out and forget about this other stuff. That's pretty, pretty important. So talk about how critical hydration and uh, nutrition is, and then maybe give us some guidance as to what we should be doing in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, hydration is just a huge part of being, you know, active. And especially if you're burning, a, you know, a surplus of calories throughout the day, actually being active um, and doing an, ener an you know, energy uh, based exercise, not necessarily. So there's a thing called the TDE, right? A total daily energy expenditure. Now, this is just the calories that you do without doing exercise, right? So just brushing your teeth, walking around the house, walking around the grocery store, and then you have the exercise that you're actually going and you're, you're running, you're walking around 
alone, like you're going or walking around the park or you're weightlifting or you're doing, you know, some type of exercise that is specifically to get your heart rate at a higher rate. So, um, so as you're, as you're burning a lot of calories, you have to constantly rehydrate yourself uh, as always. Right. And so uh, hydration is super important, especially uh, going all the way down into the cells itself without an actual, uh, without hydration and replenishing of electrolytes and water H2O into those cells, you will not, your body's going to be so stagnant. And if you don't have enough hydration, you're going to just going to have an, an increase in inflammation. So when people are like, oh, I'm super sore and you're sore for weeks, there's probably a problem, meaning you're not you're not hydrating enough. You need to let your body actually uh, push out all of the uh, all of the, the nutrients that you're eating. Now, a lot of trainers say uh, and it is it is true, you know, 70 to 80 percent of your of your of your progression is going to be based off your nutrition, right? Because mm -hmm. going and working out is what 30 to 40, 30 minutes to an hour, maybe a little bit more if you're a li little bit more advanced. Um now, that's the easy part. That's the fun part, right? Now, the hard part is actually reflecting after that or before it on the nutrition aspect yeah. is to say, hey, um, I'm going to eat more simple carbs. Or I'm going to eat more, you know, sweet potatoes, rice, uh, oatmeal, something that's easy on the digestion side so that my body can use it a lot easier. Whereas if I eat a cheeseburger before I go on a five mile run, it's probably not going to feel the best, right? <laughs> you're probably not going to feel amazing, right? And, and if you're not only that, if you're not hydrating, you're going to, you're going to feel super sick. Um, your, you know, your, your glycogen levels are going to be super depleted. Yeah. Uh, your electrolytes are going to be super depleted. So you always have to continue this, like to feed your body a, a healthy nutritional aspect. And not a lot of people know what healthy nutrition is. You know, they think, uh, healthy is, uh, eat just chicken and rice, or they think healthy is I'm just going to eat a salad. A salad's like 50 calories. You're, and if you want to go work out after that, there's probably not enough calories that your body actually needs in order to, you know, ex use that excess of energy that you're actually putting your body through. When you're exercising, you're putting your body through a lot of pressure. It's not, it's not like, oh, I'm just going to go work out and do this, right? You, everything surrounding your workout, your hydration, or the foods that you're eating, um, it's all going to base off of that workout, right? If you have a really good workout and you're eating really well, all the other workouts are going to do really, really well. Now, if you're going into the gym and you're super unmotivated and you just feel sluggish and you're just, you're not there. And then now your mindset's not there. Now you have a bad workout and now you're upset after your workout. Well, let's look around, around the workout. You know, what were you, what have you been drinking? Um, how much have you been drinking? Um, you know, not, not just H, you know, not just water, everything, you know, are you drinking sodas? Are you drinking sugar, sugary foods? Uh, or like, like, um, like juices and energy drinks and alcohol and, and just so many different things and that 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 we can slowly transition out of someone's diet uh, or, and not completely get rid of it right because we're human we we like we have cravings and it's okay to, to indulge in certain things but we we also like to say hey we're going to have those in moderation um and we're not going to surround those around our workouts because we want our workouts to be a, a, as as best as possible we want to go in the gym feeling really energized and come out really energized we don't yeah. want to come out from a workout and not feel good and then once we come out of that workout what are we eating immediately after right how is it how are we going to use the foods that we're eating to help our workout and help our replenish our body recover our body you're breaking down muscle fibers you're you're, de you're depleting of your electrolytes your micronutrients what, what vitamins should we be taking not only that but you know jumping into uh like illnesses right like diabetes or pcos or any of that like how are those affecting what our diet is going to be Right. And so it usually is. So then we have to, you know, approach different aspects. And so uh, definitely nutrition, hydration is super, super as vital to anybody's progression. 100 percent. Good. Thanks for sharing quickly. Is there like a general rule of thumb on how much water a, 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 a person should be drinking or, or target during dur during a day, whether, you know, they're super active or not? I mean, obviously, there's probably levels of it, but mm -hmm. what should we be targeting? So it, it depends on the person a whole lot. Now, the rule of thumb is how much you weigh is how much you should be drinking in fluid ounces, right? So you have 128 fluid ounces in a gallon. Now, if you're 200 pounds, you probably are going to struggle drinking a gallon and a half. That's a lot of water intake, especially if you were not a regular, regular water drink in the first place. So usually yeah. we average anywhere from 80 fluid ounces to 128. And so that's anywhere from three fourths to a gallon. If they're like, hey, I'm putting this gallon down easy. Okay, cool. Well, let's increase it anywhere from one and a half to, or one gallon to one and a half to maybe even two, depending on how uh, 
how advanced they are into actually working out how much they work out in the first place, but definitely at least anywhere from 80 to 128 fluid ounces daily, okay. which is a lot. It's not a new significant amount. Which is a lot. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it, it's going to make you feel a lot better for sure. Um, okay. I don't want to miss out on uh, talking about your business and how people can work with you. So give me, give us the, give us the website and then what are they, you mentioned an app. So like just run through that if you could. Yeah, absolutely. So you can find us on any platform. We have uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube under Rod Squad Training. Uh, we also have RodSquadTraining.com. You can go on there. We have merch. We have application forms as well. So if you are looking into starting training with us, simply go onto the website, RodSquadTraining.com. You'll go on there and have an application to train. Uh, as soon as you fill that out, somebody will reach out to you, um, most likely myself or another Rod Squad trainer will reach out to you. Um, and then we'll go ahead and, and implement uh we'll pretty much get on a phone call with you, you know, 10, 15 minute free consultation. It's no stress. We pretty much just say, Hey, what are you doing right now? And how we can come and transition you and get you on a program that's going to help you on your lifestyle and how we can continue that afterwards, you know? And so we want to educate you as much as possible. If you decide to join in with us, then we'll go ahead and get you on our app. Our app, our app is super privatized. And it's all customizable. So you can't like go download it and get several workouts. Your The coach has to specific, specifically make the workouts for you, make the nutrition for you uh, to ensure that we're not just giving cookie cutter programs. Um, we actually go in deep into our programs and realize that, hey, not everybody is the same. Everyone's completely different. So what worked for someone, someone is not going to work for another. Uh, and so we go in there and make sure everything is correct. That's mm-hmm. huge. I like that. I really do like that. So we'll leave that in the show notes, guys. Go check that out. It sounds very customizable, what you what you need. I just want to drive this point home. If you're looking to improve an area of your life and you've been struggling with it for the majority of your life, you need help, all right? If you want better relationships, you know, you hire a relationship coach or you get a counselor. If you want to be better at real estate, you hire, uh, you want to get in real estate, you hire a coach. Uh, you want to be health and fitness, you, you hire Coach Rod and his team. You know, these are not, this is not stuff that you just necessarily figure out on your own. You heard Coach Rod say it. He was, he needed to scale it. He needed to get online. He didn't know how to do it. So he went and found somebody to help him do it. And now he's, now he's successful. He's got a business helping other people do it. So don't sleep on the coaching and mentoring piece. I, 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 you know, we drive this home all the time. If you want to improve areas of your life, you have to have mentors, you have to have coaches, and you have to have accountability. W- would you have anything to add to that? No, I mean, you hit it right on the nail. You know, if there's something that you don't know or something that you want to know more of and, and being more knowledgeable in, not necessarily, I mean, it could be for business or it could be for lifestyle, it could literally be for anything. Uh, just go out there and, and, and find somebody that has done it. You know, sometimes inventing the wheel is okay, but sometimes somebody has already invented that wheel um, and they, they can get you to that point to where you want to go. Excellent. Okay. One, one last question before we wrap up here, this has been great. And again, this topic has not been covered on the the W2 present break show before. So I hope uh, you guys are getting some great nuggets out of this. What's next for your business? Where where do you see your business going, going next coach Rod? Oh man, we have so many different avenues of approach that we can go towards. So right now, I think our biggest thing is bringing on as many uh, coaches as possible with different lifestyles. Because you know, I, myself, you know, I focus more on body composition, and so I want I'm bringing on power lifters that are people who are trainers um, or, or competitors themselves, right? And we want to be able to put as many clientele on stage as well. So we train anybody from you know high schoolers to grandma and grandpas to uh to straight com- you know pro competitors and so we want to bring on uh different coaches as well uh, and so right now we have eight different coaches that, that specialize in different needs so some are just specifically fat loss some are um you know muscle building some are power lifters some actually want to get on stage back and forth so we want to expand as much as possible and and, and grow the company um from here on out with with diversity Excellent. that's our biggest thing Excellent. Look forward to seeing that happen. I know we're going to stay in touch and, and continue to communicate. Uh, folks, I just want to, just want to leave you with this. And then any final thoughts that uh, coach Rod has is, you know, if you care about your life, if you care about your family, you're going to prioritize health and fitness. Okay. You're going to prioritize health and fitness in yourself first. I can tell you all that health and fitness is the number one priority in my life because I cannot serve my family. I cannot serve my business. I cannot serve the people that work for me if I am not at my personal best. Um, 
some of you may disagree. Coach, you may have a different a different opinion, but that's first and foremost in my life, and 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 this needs to be made a priority. Absolutely, create that foundation, and our health and fitness is is the perfect starting point. Excellent, great having you on. I'm glad we I'm glad we met, uh, and I look forward to continued discussions. Everyone, make it an excellent day, and uh, get, get started on a path to 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 live in a, a great healthy life, and get in touch with Coach Rod. Absolutely. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate that. You got it, bud.